we've had a nymph explosion. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So guys, here I have an adult female giant budwing, or Phenopharus coeoensis, if I pronounced that right. Now this girl is getting on a bit here. Oh, see she's very, very clumsy. She's not got a, the grip that she used to have. Um, but she's had lots and lots of babies. So today we're gonna to be doing a housing video of me dealing with around 30 to 50 nymphs. So I'm gonna be popping her back in her enclosure now and I'll show you how I'm gonna deal with this situation. Or maybe not, as she decided to crawl up on my shoulder and is now trying to go into my face. <laughs> she don't wanna let go. She can just stay there for now. So guys, here is an enclosure. It's just a basic setup here. We've got a substrate bottom that I keep damp, but then we've also got airy conditions by it being a net cage. Now these guys are supposed to be known for like in humid environments, but I found mine deal better in an area condition with just simple misting instead. Now guys, in this tub here, you can see our nymph explosion. We've got some older ones in there too. That's because I needed to rehouse them into this larger enclosure here. So I've collected up all the nymphs, including some of the slightly older ones. And then this was what's remainder of the eggs that I took out of the old enclosure. I popped them in here and we've actually had one, two, three, four more hatch just overnight. So we'll do the easy part first. Let's get these four into the enclosure. Now the simplest way you can do it in a hatchery, oops, is lift off the lid, place the lid in, and they'll climb off. Nice and simple. Let them climb out at their own will. You can even leave the tub in there overnight and they'll all climb out onto the bramble. But guys, the problem with these little ones is they like to explore. So if we can see on the edge here, it's already making an escape for it. Simply use your finger. Go back in, little dude. Or little lady, should I say. These are parthenogenic. This is a full parthenogenic um, culture. You can find males in the wild, though I've never seen one in captivity. Now, oh, excuse me. The mother is now climbing on my head. Hang on a sec, guys. Okay, right. We're gonna pop her in now because she doesn't want to let go of me. No, not upside down, you silly sausage. There we go. So let's have a quick look at her and then we'll get to the main part of this video. So there she is in the enclosure. See, she's missing a leg there. These are notorious for losing legs, guys. Most long-legged phasmids will lose a few legs as they grow. Now she can't gain that back because she's fully mature, but if they lose them at a younger age, they have the ability to grow them back in their next molt. Now, this wouldn't be a YouTube video if I was just gonna open this tub and leave it inside there, would it? So I'm gonna do this the hard way. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna reposition this camera, I'm gonna open this lid and do it all by hand, one by one. Now these guys are gonna scatter, so I hope you enjoy it. Now I've got to make it slightly easier on myself. Let's put it in this pan. No, it's not going to fit. Well, my way of making it slightly easier on myself has just failed. So we're going to have to do this the hard way. I'm going to time lapse this through guys because this is going to be a timely experience. But I just want to show you what it's like sometimes being a phasmid keeper. It isn't always easy, but it's certainly all fun and games. <laughs> So guys, there we have it. 
<laughs> it was not easy to do that, although it may have looked quite simple. Now I know you might not have been able to see well, there's one on the door here, there's one here. There's no more making an escape for it on the bottom, thank God. So there we have our adult female there, and you can see them all along the side, all along the back there. Some on that old piece of bramble. Yes, I cheated a little bit by picking up the branch. If we go up here, we've got uh, a juvenile there, another baby. And then on the ground level, I can't actually see many, but we've got lots of over here. I plonked the last of the over back in here to continue on hatching. Now guys, you might have witnessed a lot of them dropping off my hands when I was doing the maneuvers, but don't panic about that. This is their defense mechanism. They, if they feel startled, they will just drop and show kind of like a hissy fit on the floor where they bounce around. Uh, it's just their way of defending themselves. So don't panic if that happens when you try to handle, especially with young nymphs. The adults will also do the same. Now, I just wanted to get some more footage of this girl here because she's not gonna have much longer left of her lifespan. But these young nymphs here, they should live around a year from now. So that'll be pretty good, but I'm not going to be able to house all of them as adults in here. So I think I'm going to have to give some away at some point. So guys, I hope you enjoyed just this short video out there today. Now just for a bit of extra species information for you. These guys eat bramble, raspberry, hawthorn, and I don't know how to pronounce the other one, hypericum, hypericum, hypericum. I don't know, but that plant, I don't even know what it is if I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Adults grow to around about 13 centimeters in length as females, I'm not sure about the males because as I said previously, they're only ever spotted in the wild if spotted at all. And they get their name from the tiny little bud wings that they have on their backs. Now they cannot use these to fly, but what they will do if they feel startled is flare them up and they have a little red and also a black and white dotted sort of patterning onto the wings. But that bright redness is kind of an indication of danger, although there is absolutely no danger with these guys. They are a really good beginner species. However, like mentioned before, they are very prone to losing legs. If you were to grab one incorrectly, it will drop a leg as well just to escape you. Humidity levels are a little bit more awkward with this particular species. As I said again, they are from Thailand, they're supposed to be kept pretty humid. But in my personal keeping of them, I found better to have the plants misted and have the substrate slightly damp, but the general enclosure quite airy. Or if I were to keep them in a tank, which I have done before, then I spray less often. I don't know why guys, but that's just what has worked for me and I've kept these guys for some time now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed just this little video out there for you today about the Phenopharus kaoyuensis or the giant budwing stick insect. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, let me know what you think. And as always guys, take care. Thanks again. Bye bye.